Welcome back, folks. And it is good to be back. I took a little bit of a break there. I had some back-to-back -back illnesses. That was a lot of fun. But now that I am good to go, it is party time. So we're heading to Garuda Desert. And I know this is a moment many of you have been waiting for, me included. Alright, so we all know what this is going to be. Alright, folks, just to show you on the map where we're at, where we're going. So the Gerudo Skyview Tower is actually right here. And the easiest way to get over there is probably going to be a Sky Island, you know, especially if you've got this cluster here. A uh, real quick flight down to get to that. But you can actually also get there from the Great Sky Island. Just make sure you pack some stamina. But I'm not going to fly there. It's a lot more fun to take a horse. Reason being, guys, there's a lot of loot on the way. That being said, this is definitely going to be a longer video. So buckle up and let's party. Alright, so first things first, a couple of bad boy nests. Now it's raining in my game. That's going to be a problem because there's going to be all this chew jelly all over the place. And some of these guys really like to fuse that to their weapons. So I need to pay a little bit of attention during this fight. I always try to jump off your horse and pull that bow out the split second you push that jump button. I think it's the X button. That'll give you a lot of air time. You'll really be able to get up here and do a lot of damage. Speaking of those uh, yellow chew jellies, I'm going to go ahead and pick them up just to be on the safe side. So I think I've got like 50 of those portable cooking pots. Good times. Alright, first treasure chest knocked out. Now there's also a Karak seed over here. Speaking of Karak seeds, there's quite a few of these things on this route. It's another reason I like to use the land-based approach. Alright, so I definitely like to use the horse. It just kind of does the work for you. You let it stay on path. And uh, I know I don't have the map. But that's okay, if you just let the horse kind of guide you, uh, it, it's real hard to get lost getting out this way. Alright folks, there is a mini stable here on the way, so go ahead and get your pony point. Okay, and there is a Karak seed down here, so just... What is that? North of the uh, stable there. Okay, and there you have it. So while we're down here, there's another Karak seed right here at water level. And for this one, we gotta play Plunger. Alright, you can either climb your way back up. Or you can find an ascend point. Quite a lot of hidden treasure chests up here too, by the way. Okay, once you ascend up top side here, there are some loose lootables around. Take a moment, scoop up what you can. There's also a treasure chest right up here on top of this little... right out in the open. Alright folks, continuing on path here. We're about to run out of map here pretty soon. But uh, that's okay, I'll walk you through that part as best as I can. Okay, we do have a dispenser here. I always like to unlock all of those. Okay, got them all unlocked. We are good to go. Before we get going too much further, there is one more Karak seed down here. Alright, as soon as we get past these bridges, there's going to be quite a structure coming up. It's like a sky chunk. And there's some to-dos here. Alright folks, and before we actually go diving right on in there, there's an NPC here we need to talk to to get a quest going. Okay, and there's three NPCs we're going to have to talk to, and I'll make sure I find those for you along the way. Okay, go ahead until you're ready. Stay near a fire. Go to a shady spot. And chill shroom. Kind of forgot there was one more question here. That one's cave. Get your free spicy pepper. 
Now go ahead and stealth up, guys. There's a lot of lizards here and just kind of on the way in general. I just saw a couple pop into view there. Yes, I can. Alright, folks, there is actually a point to that giant structure. There's a treasure chest hidden in there. tough to get in here, but as long as you build that scaffolding, you should be okay. Yep. Booyah. Okay, so I cannot take the horse through here. I kind of forgot about that fact. But by night it's going to be cold, by day it's going to be hot, so you got desert conditions here for sure. And we got our first cave. In addition to Crocs and treasure chest folks, there's lots of caves on this route. More lizards in here. All right, once you kill your fire breath lizzles there, go ahead and give him another talking to. And in case you're wondering, he's one of three people that we have to find as part of a quest. So I'll walk you through that part too as we go here. Okay, you got a treasure chest hidden in here. There we go. Alright folks, it is desert conditions, so you're going to see both fire and ice lizzles on this route. Uh, probably a good idea to save the game before you really get into it. Notice they just switched over there. So, uh, yeah, sometimes you know you can really score and get a lot of the monster parts you need. Other times it's just kind of bunk. So I say save the game just in case you know, you're not getting whatever it is you need, whether it be the talons, the, the, the tails, etc. Uh, you know, you can reload that save and give it another go and see if you get the monster parts you need. If you do, uh, I would drop another hard save um, to make sure that you get to keep that just in case, you know, down the road you die or reload a save. You'll still have your monster parts. Long throw. And wow, am I tired, guys. I, I, I apologize for the break there, but wow, I was sick for a couple of weeks back to back. I don't know what was going on. Uh, it eventually turned into straps, so yeah, just a uh, barrel full of fun there. Okay, that brings us to another cave. A lot of hardy lizards in this area, so I know I talked a lot about hardy lizards being kind of like the new hardy durian. And, um, oh, I guess I was in the rainforest area, you know, the first time I was really coming across these things consistently. But this is another right you can take to really find those things consistently. Inside caves, outside caves, etc. Every cave has a bubble frog. This cave is no exception. You can barely see an opening in the ceiling here where there's a gemstone node kind of glowing. And that's it, folks. You really have to know it's there. Otherwise, it's real easy to just kind of bypass this bubble frog altogether. Rare node, nice. So just to give you bearing where we're at, that is the big stone structure there. And just south of that, um, kind of like right over there, we just hit that cave. There's our blue pea kind of telling us there's a cave there. Uh, that was that first little cave entrance I found. And there's a Hudson puzzle right here. That ought to do it. 
All right, folks, so continuing on our rocky road path here, I guess is what I'll call it. We're going to head right up there to where there used to be a treasure chest. And there used to be a well, and there still is. Only now, of course, you can go down the well. Lots of hardy lizards in this one. You know, as far as wells go, this is actually a pretty lucrative well. I hate those wells when you hop down there and there's like an apple. Alright folks, so from this well head due south and there's gonna be yet another Karak seed. This one's a twofer. And another cave. Go ahead and deal with him first. So yeah, that twofer is right over here somewhere. Hiding. And he doesn't have to go far, but he does have to go up. Now, normally I would build an airplane, you know, just because it, it's the most... I don't know, to me it's the most fun. But in this case, they give you these spiky things here, so I kind of like to take advantage of these. Go ahead and glue him to one of those. Alright, once you got your twofer, now we're gonna go cave diving. And I know that, that smoke signal there, it's a big shiny rock. But uh, that cave is right here. Is that a royal broadsword just sitting there? Or durability, which is a long throw's very close cousin. I was getting dizzy looking for him. <laughs> Alright folks, so as soon as you exit that cave, head west toward that smoke signal. Now it's time to, to mess with that. I just use a rock hammer to kill a wolf. Good time. Okay. Again, because it's night time here, I'm going to take full advantage and try to get some ice lizard parts here. That's right above that cave, by the way. Alright, no more shiny rocks. Smoke signal. Alright, go ahead and talk to customer number two. Alright guys, now we can actually go two ways. Uh, if we keep going up the trail this way, the way I used to like to go in Breath of the Wild, that kind of dead ends that's like flooded or something. Uh, then there's another walking trail we can get to kind of bypass that, but honestly there's a lot of stuff this way. So what I'll probably do is go this way first, you know, get all the goods. And then I'll go ahead and, you know, backpedal a little bit and uh, go out and around the other way. So far, now I'm just going to go ahead and proceed north, northwest. Oh good, a sky chunk is falling. I don't have to climb. I always like to take advantage of sky chunks whenever they're available. Okay, so that was the path I was just on. That's that giant lane bridge. I try to take advantage of these lizzles while I can, but before we do that, there's a couple of treasure chests. One is right below me. Ooh, Dragon Bone Boko Bow. Let's see what we got. I'll take it. Alright, and the whole reason I even climbed this land bridge was for this Korok seed here. The one thing I don't like about this is this used to be climate controlled. You didn't have to worry about temperature damage here. You know, you could stealth up, run around quick at night. It's just not the same type of party in TOTK. A hundred and four Karak seeds. Why am I even getting these things anymore? Alright, folks, continuing on our journey here, we'll come to yet another Karak seed and another cave. But first things first, we need to help our friend. And to do that, we're going to have to build a vehicle for him, for sure.
All right, once we got our two for, I'm gonna go back and hit that cube before we go anywhere else. Shiny. And lucky for us, we're kind of swimming with the current here. So it doesn't take a ton of stamina to get through. Okay, got a couple of nodes here. And of course our bubble frog. I don't think I can actually get that from here. Let's see if I, it'll let me open it. It will not. Kind of looks like it's open. Durability. Now, right, folks, we're not quite done with the cave just yet. Another little loot spot over here. All right, folks, and just in case you're wondering what this frog statue is, there's actually a Yiga quest that I don't have going yet, so I don't even think this will let me do anything. Okay, and it will not, but you might want to mark that for future reference. The uh, reason being is there's a Yiga quest later on where they want you to go around and offer five bananas to five of those statues. Then sometimes you'll see those things and you'll totally forget, you know, when the time comes where they were. And uh, it's just very, very helpful, you know, if you mark those things as you go. Alright, and since the current is not in our favor, I like to go ahead and ascend and get back topside at this point. And then I usually find a sky chunk I can take, and uh, that makes, you know, getting back to where we left off very quick. This probably starts looking familiar once you see that land bridge down below. Okay, so since we have, you know, the advantage of altitude and flight time here, I'm gonna get a little bit of a head start before we get into this bend that goes around to the left. There's another shrine quest. So I'm going to go ahead and activate that so we can get that crystal up here. And that's actually what that vehicle is for down below that I used for their Croc seat a second ago. And as you can see, this thing is not close at all. But at least they give us a vehicle. actually going to keep that right here in this chest and remember this shrine if I ever need that long sword I'm going to come back and hopefully get a better bump on it. All right folks so just following the path or I should say river. Okay since it's only got the one fan it shouldn't you know be too taxing on your battery. But there are places you can kind of shore up, you know, and recharge if need be.
All right, continuing upstream on our makeshift boat here, there's another cave coming up. Pretty big size cave there. Tough to miss, but if you're not down here, you'll never know it's there. talking all right quite a long cave and we're, we got our first taste of like sands falling through the cracks one thing I really liked about Gerudo was that whole sand falling through the cracks kind of thing so yeah there's still hardy lizards in the area scimitar baby all right and I got a lucky draw there that's an attack power up Bye bye. All right, that'll be our first Gerudo Scimitar in my walkthrough. So that in and of itself makes this cave worthwhile to come to. And folks, feel free to go ahead and tip that sucker. We went from 15 to 77. That is absolutely insane. Just to give you a frame of reference for what these Gerudo weapons do, I tipped this Royal Broadsword that was already attack up to 10, by the way. Put a silver Lionel Saber Horn on that sucker, and it's still not as strong as that Gerudo weapon. The only thing to keep in mind, that is the Gerudo weapon's superpower right there. It just really, really, you know, enhances that, that weapon tipper. Um, but, you know, there's no Flurry Rush bonus, you know, no other bonuses that come with any of the other weapons. Uh, that literally is what you get when you do the Gerudo Scimitar uh, weapon tipping. The one thing I like about the Guru Scimitar is it's a one-handed weapon. So, you know, normally I'm a two-handed weapon kind of person. I really like that swing attack. But, you know, in this case, I can keep my shield out. I can, you know, do the, the one-handed deal. And it's really nice to have that feature. And that was just a silver bobkin, folks. Watch what happens when I put a silver Lionel Horde on that sucker. We went from 77 to a buck 25. Wowzers. You put your barbarian armor on on top of that, or you know, eat a, a high level attack power meal. That 125 turns into roughly 185, give or take. The thing I like about that is you don't have to worry about flurry rushing or anything. So, yeah, that's great. Double damage while you're in a flurry rush, but then you have to worry about hitting the flurry rush. Uh, with this, you pretty much get just get the straight-up damage output. You almost can't beat it. So next step is I'm going to break that weapon, so you're going to see me using that and only that. But I will not be doing it with my Barbarian armor on, so I break it just a little bit quicker. I'm getting back to that hole the sands are falling from the ceiling thing. I didn't know what to do first there. There was shiny stuff, there was a bubble frog. I was losing my mind. Okay, there is another cave entrance right above me. Now, it's already pre-marked on my map, so I don't need to worry about, like, you know, actually discovering that. And I just realized I missed a Karak Seed on the way in this cave, so I'm going to kind of backtrack just a little bit. Go get that Karak Seed, and I'll meet you right back on top here. And it's on, like, a ledge that overlooks the river here. There you are. Real tough to see because of like the, the, the mist or whatever. The dusty atmosphere. Yeah. Alright, and there he is. So I know I don't have the map, but you know, the river is kind of etched into the map. So, you know, hopefully that, that's helping you guys, you know, follow along here. Alright, so you can see on my mini map there, I'm top side of that cave we were just in. Don't forget your gemstone. I just realized I'm taking temperature damage. That's what ice shields are for. Mm. Mm. 
All right, folks, so that is the third of the folks that we had to rescue. So once you discover all three of those peeps, you can go back to the quest giver and wrap that whole quest line up. I'm not going to do that right now just because it's kind of out of the way. For right now, I'm just going to go ahead and press on with the walkthrough here. Now, folks, I said in the beginning of the video I was going to backtrack and kind of, you know, go back through on a different route to get over here instead of the river route that I took. Um, but honestly, it's quite a long ways back there, and there's only a couple of things that I can actually get from, actually, you know, where we're at now. Um, so I'm just going to go the way we could have come, only I'm going to go backwards. And there's a couple of Hudson puzzles, maybe a croc seat or two. And then, um, you know, that'll kind of save the trip all the way back to the beginning, uh, just to circle back around this way. Alright, that was the way it tried to kick out last time. Let's see what happens. Oh, it wasn't pretty, but it did the job. Alright, continuing on south down this walking path here. There should be another Hudson puzzle coming up. That thing should be around here somewhere. Okay, I actually walked right past it. It's uh, right underneath, right next to that land bridge there. And this one isn't too bad because it's going to want to lean forward. So as long as you can brace its, its ability to do that, you'll be okay. That ought to do. There's another Karak seed here. It's kind of out of the way, but, you know, I've come this far. I might as well just go ahead and scoop it up. I wish they were all this easy. Alright, so to get back to where I came from, I'm just going to go ahead and simply warp. And there's a relatively quick way to get back up topside. Getting real close to the tower, folks. Okay, so we can actually see the tower from here. And we're going to head south, kind of southwest, uh, to get our tower activated. Normally I would do like a separate video, you know, secrets of whatever tower, but honestly there's just not that much here. Um, at least not right by the tower. It's kind of all spread out, you know, a couple of Karak seeds here and there. Uh, caves are, you know, all over the place. Uh, there is a rare stone talus here. Actually a couple of them. Uh, but one particularly close to the tower up here. Lots of lizzles here, folks. They are everywhere. And the nice thing is, every blood moon, you can kind of come back through here, kill a whole bunch more. And the next nice thing about that is you can throw a campfire down if need be, so, you know, you can change it day to night, night to day. And you can farm the specific lizzles you need as to, you know, whatever your, your monster parts is that you're in need of. All right, guys, we do have a cherry blossom tree here. Feel free to toss an apple into the offering tray there and it'll light it all up for you, all the caves that are in the area. Look at that, I just found an Endura Carrot. If I'm being honest, I'm not sure I uh, knew that one was there. Okay, apparently there are no more Endura Carrots. Okay, there are a couple of Karak Seeds here, just like in BOTW. And because I just want to get it broken soon anyway... Ooh, the more the merrier. I'm just not getting the tails tonight. Alright folks, that brings us to our next cave. Just to kind of show you on the map here, I know I said I was going to get the map, but uh, this is kind of close of en enough and easy enough to get to. It's right underneath. Uh, this is like a high spot, so we're like just down below that. And this is where that rare stone talus is, by the way. So what I'm going to do is hit this cave first, and then we're going to go ahead and ascend and get up and, you know, deal with that talus. 
All right, there you are. Um, just to kind of show you relative to that cave entrance, uh, go up to where the sky chunk is, and you'll come to a pedestal up here. Now, it took me a second to locate that. Now, you got to be quick on this one. If you've got tons of rocket shields in your inventory, um, I mean, you don't necessarily have to use one, but it does just kind of speed it up, you know, especially if you have trouble climbing around real quick. So, folks, I am definitely feeling better, um, but I'm still not 100%, so if I just don't seem, you know, super talkative, I'm doing my best here, I promise. Um, I just didn't want to delay getting content out any further than what I have, uh, which is kind of disappointing, you know. I've been looking forward to Garuda for so long. I really wanted to be at my best when I came here. Uh, but again, I just didn't want to delay, you know, pushing the content out any more than I already have. Alright, go ahead and bust this boulder clump up here. Then we'll get our bubble frog exposed. Nice hiding place for a bubble frog, I ain't gonna lie. What? Uh, I'll just let him go. Uh, watch out for the muck in this one. There it is, guys. Gerudo Claymore. Boy, I'm getting really lucky with attack power up with these Gerudo weapons. I guess all the durability and, you know, long throw leading up to this point, that's okay. And I'm not going to amp this one up, you know, with the, the, the Lionel. I'm going to try to, you know, get this broken a little quicker. So I do want to tip it, uh, just not crazy. But you saw that one from 19 to 81. Still not bad uh, for a two-handed swinging weapon. Matter of fact, that outperforms that Claymore there with that Silver Lionel Mace Horn, so same type of deal. It just really, really amplifies that tipper. So we haven't even gotten to Gerudo yet, and we've already got the weapons I want to break. Now that, you know, I've got the weapons I need, once they get broken, then I'll be all primed up to go into the depths and get the pristine versions of both. And guys, it's really nice to have the pristine version. Um, I know a long time ago I was talking about maybe doing some Gerudo depths, you know, but I just couldn't do it. I didn't have the weapons broken yet. And it would have pained me too much to be running around the depths, you know, knowing I could have been getting pristine Gerudo weapons. Uh, and I just didn't, you know, take the time to go get the stuff broken beforehand. And look at that, I got all ahead of myself jibber jabbering about Gerudo weapons. I totally forgot to ascend while I was in this cave. Speaking of Gerudo weapons, I'm just gonna go ahead and kill this uh, rare talus straight up. And I'm going to do it with that Gerudo Scimitar. Without attack power meal. Okay, now be careful. You've got muck. So make sure when you ascend, you know, you're not going to be stuck in the muck up here. Okay, here's another one of those offering trays I mentioned earlier. So I'm going to take a moment and mark that. That's only the second one I found so far. Wake up! Yeah, no attack power meal or anything. This is just that straight up scimitar. Not a bad deal, yo yo. That thing's damaged already, so it's gonna break here any second. There it is, baby! Alright, the only bad thing is they're not super durable weapons. You know, it's kind of like that whole Royal Guard Claymore thing. It's great for that attack damage output, but they don't last forever. So next one on the hit list is going to be that Gerudo Claymore. Uh, the pristine versions help a little bit with durability, by the way. It's, it's still going to kind of break fast, but um, it won't feel like it's lightning fast like uh, what you just saw with that, that saber sword there. Still no tails. Wow. That is a terrible... 
uh, loot drop rate for those things in my game tonight. I mean, normally I don't see a ton of those things, but normally I get at least a handful of them. Alright, folks, we have finally arrived at our Skyview Tower. And you'll notice the doors are closed. Go ahead and open those bad boys up. And you'll see, like, the thing's having trouble here. It's flickering. There's something wrong. Alright, so go ahead and give him a talking yeah. to. Alright, and he wants his platform repaired, so we're gonna do that for him. Right about there. Okay, I'm not quite sure how many of these blocks it's gonna take. I'm just gonna kind of start stuffing them all up here and see what happens. That was apparently too many there. Alright, once he's up here, go ahead and give him a talking to. And he'll get us going. Go ahead and activate that bad boy. And shoot yourself out of the cannon like the circus. Alright folks, just to kind of give you a quick map overview where we went. This is where that big stone structure was. We ascended to get that chest. And we just basically followed the path, hit the river, followed the river. And um, this is where I kind of backtracked, you know, and went back for those two Hudson puzzles. But again, it was just another walking path. And that ended with that bird that we shot for the chest. And there's a Karak seed here. Now there's another Karak seed over here. I've kind of felt like it was out of the way. You know, I, you know, backtracked far enough there. But you know, this one is definitely there if you so desire. And there was one more that I kind of felt like there was, you know, it was a bit out of the way. And I'm not exactly a hundred percent sure, but I think he's up here somewhere. And you're looking for one of those husks you have to shoot, like under a structure. So that's probably like a a rock or something just look under that rock and you'll see the thing hanging there fyi there is a flame dragon here so be aware of him and i ran right past a karak seed you guys probably noticed the little three prong tree that i almost like literally ran right into uh, i meant to do it and then i saw the lizzles and then yeah that that just that was all done but in case you're interested it's right down around there somewhere but since I'm already airborne, I'm going to take advantage of that fact and go finish up this quest line. Uh, go back to that quest giver for those three people I helped out on the way. And you'll probably notice there's some uh, Sky Islands coming into view. And this is a set of Sky Islands that we haven't not actually been to yet. So my next video will probably be the Gerudo Sky Islands here. Folks, I sincerely hope that helped you all out. Please take a moment to like, share, subscribe, and comment. That is always appreciated. And as always, until the next time, best of luck and happy hunting. Ten bomb flowers? Really? I did all that work? And you gave me ten bomb flowers? Hey, I'm talking to you. So, like, should we wake him up? No, he needs to sleep it off. I told you not to chug that. Ouch. Ouch. You know, you'd think I'd learn with these Captain 4 constructs, I just, uh, I don't. Ouch. That's two fairies. <laughs> I think that's three. <laughs> Ow! Wow, where did my weapon go? This is not my fight. That's four fairies. I think that's pretty much all I've got. Alright, let's try this one. Ouch. There I go. I honestly don't know what I expected to find over here. I thought that was going to be a cement structure or whatever. Really? Okay, so there's our treasure chest right smack dab in the middle there. And we can't get to it from here. We actually have to ascend up into that compartment. Hard to get to. So what I like to do is use my, my sensor here. Right about where I need to be standing for ascend. Now 
It's actually been a while since I've done this, and it's not coming to me how I got in there last time. Oh, I did that twice. I am getting really low on ice arrow ammo. Whoops. Apparently there's not enough room for both. This town ain't big enough for the both of us. It's a Karak. On a stick. And that was only... They're tumbleweeds. Give me my treasure chest. Really? It's gonna make me remove... Each tumbleweed at a time. <laughs> 